All right, in today's masterclass, we are going to talk all about facial fat. How can we stimulate more of it, if that's even possible in the literature? What are some of the things that are actually going to do what you're hoping for? And then also some of the questions I've been receiving around these different topical products that claim to stimulate more facial fat and actually trigger fat cell growth. We're going to talk about that because one of the things I love about engaging with you all here in the live recordings of these shows on the School of Radiance podcast and these master classes here that I love to have you join in for free and live. And if you're catching the replay, be sure to join my next live recording over at the school of radiance.com. This is just really fun. It's also kind of like office hours. You can ask me anything. So keep your questions coming in regards to what you're seeing online and hearing about different products that claim to stimulate more facial fat. And I'm going to walk through some of the things that we can do at home to thicken the skin and also protect the fat that we do have. And also some of the things that are available in the clinic also, because yes, I mean, it's a fact. We all want to look and feel our best. We all want to spend our time and attention on things that are going to give us the results that we're after. And it's always been my intention to sort of like train you and give you the educational and informational guidance so that you save tens of thousands of dollars and time because that's why you're here. You're looking for that more discerning voice and what's fact and what's you know, fad, because especially in the skin and rejuvenation space, there's always new products coming out, but really what are the tried and true options that are available? And also what is the sequence of employing those things? You probably haven't thought about that either. The sequence in which to employ more facial volumizing and thickening of the skin, because it's never going to be one product. It's never going to be one treatment and it's never going to be one supplement. I will, however, say that in this class talking about facial fat, we're also going to be talking about rejuvenation treatments and options that are available that are backed by the literature and some things that you can do alongside that to actually assist with cellular functioning of your skin because you're investing your time and money into skincare products and dribble rolling and rejuvenation. You want to make sure that the collagen and elastin you are stimulating giveaway is going to be happy and healthy collagen. So we do need to fuel ourselves. So I'm going to be sharing some tips on that. So keep your questions coming in regards to what you're seeing online for products to stimulate facial fat or even in clinic rejuvenation that claim to stimulate facial fat. And I'm going to just for a moment differentiate the differences between, explain the differences between bone mass, fat mass in the face, and also collagen and elastin, which makes up the structure of our skin. So we have these three key things that shift as we age. So let's talk about the aging process. When we look at ourselves in the mirror, especially between those years of perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, and this is also going to apply to the men. We don't want to leave out the gentlemen who are listening here. I connected with a lovely gentleman the other day for a consultation and then have a follow-up with an existing client of mine, Michael. And they're all saying the same things. Hey, what about us? Give us the, the skin tips too. Well, the good thing is, is that all the skin tips that I share, I mean, we all have skin. We all have skin. So even though I might be directing the content more towards women, because it's about 75% of who I serve, 25% of you listening are also men too. So you're going to love this lesson here all on facial fat. What's fat and what's fat in particular? So as we age, we lose fat and bone and collagen and elastin. So one thing that you can do to keep your facial fat is to no longer be sleeping on your side or your stomach. If you live in a place in the world where we drive on the right side of the road, so our driver's side is the left side, 
which means we're getting a lot of sun damage, which yes, impacts your facial fat, your collagen and elastin, not to mention things like eyelid laxity and sun damage. So we get a beating on the left side of the face from running our errands and do make sure that you are applying your skincare and sunscreen. Even when you are dropping the kids off, I did a consultation with a beautiful woman the other day and she said that she does her self-care and her skincare after she gets the kids ready for school, drops them off and then comes back. And I gently encouraged her to actually, before she wakes those kiddos up, to do her self-care routine, take your bath, take your shower, wash your face, put your eye cream on, put your antioxidant serum on this, especially this time of year, your moisturizer and your sunscreen, do a little bit of makeup. I mean, you're going to be seeing people dropping your kids off. Why not also bring your best face forward? Because those kids' parents might become your friends or have some type of, you know, really great opportunity that uh, just falls into your lap, especially because you are radiant and you become a magnet for beautiful other radiant people and things and opportunities in your life. That's the whole point of not just looking good, but feeling good and being our best, most radiant version. So, you know, I love to talk about the behind the scenes stuff as well, that really just is going to, when we take the time in the AM to do our skincare and we're going to be more confident. We're Anytime we're out at the grocery store dropping the kids off, you might think, oh, I'm not going to write it into anybody important. Everybody's important. And you just never know how important that individual or that interaction might be for you and potentially even your family. So when we show up as our most confident version, then you're going to be more comfortable and confident in your engagements that you do have with people. And you're going to be damaging your skin. I just wanted to add here, if you're driving, you know, 10, 15 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes there without having skincare and sunscreen on, you are going to be getting that 10, 15 minutes of cumulative sun damage, which, you know, a couple of years later, or decades later is going to catch up with you. So for those parents out there, mothers and fathers, by the way, happy Mother's Day, everybody. For those parents out there, do your skincare and self-care first. Put your oxygen mask on first. Lay the example of the self-care for those who are looking up to you and, you know, have your coffee and your vitamins and all that good stuff in the AM too. Take that time for yourself in your AM routine to get grounded for the day, not just hit the ground running because that type of lifestyle is also going to significantly age you faster as well. Your cortisol is going to be raised. We want to stay cool, calm, and collected. That is a winning recipe for success for looking fantastic for as long as possible, even well into your 80s, 90s. I've just seen some beautiful radiant women in my, in my path uh, clinically working with people and their rejuvenation. So I wanted to start with that. Sleep on your back as much as possible. I have the beautiful Envy pillow on my biohacking page where you can find a few things that I'll probably mention in this episode here that you can uh, pick up for yourself. Your sleep position for maintaining the bone and the fat that you have is really important. So back sleeping is going to be the best way to slow your facial aging and that resorption of bone and that compression of that. So if you are getting the sun damage on your left side and you're sleeping on your left side, you are going to notice significantly more rapid aging on the left side of your face. If you're going to sleep on two sides, or it's going to be on your back, and then it's also going to be on your right side. Right side sleeping is actually better because the weight of the liver is, is off to the right, and then the heart is elevated. So there is some data on that too. So I wanted to talk about your sleep position because it's the compression while you're sleeping on the different bones of your face and your facial fat pad, especially the malar fat pad, which is what makes up your cheek when you pinch your cheek, that beautiful pad of fat that you have there. And that's really important to support, especially the lower eyelid area to help prevent signs of aging like eye bags because we just had a question about losing fat pads under the eyes. And Natasha's actually brought something up really interesting here. I wasn't going to talk about this, but this is something that is in the literature. So this is worthwhile as something that can potentially contribute to facial fat 
loss, and I have heard about this. Thanks, Natasha. Have lost fat pads under my eyes due to an allergic reaction to prescription eye drops. Is there any help for this? And yes, there are some medications out there with eye drops that can cause facial fat atrophy. We have lots of small facial fat compartments all over our face. There's a really good study that I reference in my research that actually looks at the various facial fat pads. And when we lose the support of the bone, that's why it's so important for you all to also be doing weight bearing exercises to keep your skeletal bones stronger with weight bearing exercises. We're kind of like gently breaking down our bones a little bit, and then it stimulates actually the bone production to happen. The osteoclast and osteoblast pathways. All right. And is there any help for this? Well, if it's been a while since you've been on those drops, yes, yeah, sometimes doing lower eyelid or upper eyelid surgery. That's the type of specialty I've been a part of since 2011. Oculoplastics, the eyes are the first area of the face to show signs of aging. So I'm not surprised, Natasha, that you brought up a question around fat pads around the eyes because we do, we do see this as we age. Is there any help for this? Yes, this is exactly what this class is all about. So I'm glad that you're here. And Jackie, what about latex allergies from the pillow? Well, the Envy pillow in <laughs> Natasha says, yay. The Envy pillow is fantastic. It's like a 10 year product. And there's lots of different pillows that they actually manufacture. And if you have allergies before ordering anything, yes, absolutely ask if that's an ingredient in it. All right. So getting back into facial fat, you probably heard of a skincare product or skincare cream or a few of them actually that I've seen that claim to regenerate fat cells in the face. Now, is this fact or is this fad? Well, I would love to come across some clinical evidence to support this because if there was a cream on the market that did actually simulate fat, then that's fantastic. Now, some of the other options that I think are more, well, not I think, are more researched backed that's what we want to focus on. We don't, we don't want to focus on these airy fairy brand new things that comes out that you saw an ad on Instagram or Facebook for that has a very compelling before and after image because most of the time when I come across an ad for a product like that, which you're probably seeing too, because all day, every day I'm on my computer talking about skin and all that. So I get the same as you are. The, those before and after photos, there's one company in particular that's doing this. They're showing a before and after photo of 70 days later. And I don't believe those after photos for one second because I can see clearly that there's either been eyelid surgery or photoshopping. And that's really difficult for you who's seeing these ads and you're feeling that you might be self-conscious around fat loss around the eyes like Natasha or fat loss to the cheeks resulting in sagging and drooping to the jawline, that this can be something that, oh, wow, this is something I really want to do something about. And this product claims to do just that. Now, I want you to hit pause anytime you come across an ad like this where the before and after photo just seems like a little too good to be true. Send me a direct email, info at the school of radiance.com because it's always my aim to kind of like highlight these fads out there that are also misleading. And I just feel really bad for the people that, you know, they, they want to do something about, and they put their trust in one product and then they spend all this money and they don't get the results that they're after. And then you find another product that says it's going to do that. And then you find another product that says it's going to do that. Like think about the time and money that's wasting in trying all of these different things. That's going to take you a really long time. You're probably not going to get the results that you want. And it's also going to cost you a lot of time and money and you don't get time back. So that's why I'm glad that you're here. When it comes to what we can actually do to stimulate more fat in the face, I hate to break it to you, but the literature and the data does not support that uh, in-clinic rejuvenation treatment 
or some type of topical agent is going to stimulate fat cell regeneration or new fat cells. So the nature of a fat cell is really interesting. When we gain weight, the fat cells get bigger. When we lose weight, the fat cells get smaller. And that's actually what some of these body contouring for the, for the body for different areas of fat, like the, the upper back, the lower back, the abdomen, the inner thighs, the arms, there are some really fantastic body contouring technologies out there. I would honestly tell you that most of the body contouring tech out there isn't really going to do what say liposuction would do or a tummy tuck would do. So I just want to be fully transparent. There is the non-surgical and the surgical category. Okay. So there's non-surgical options for actually telling those fat cells to either shrink using hot or cold, or when it gets to a certain temperature of being very cold or very hot, it can actually trigger fat cell death. And this is where we get the results of body contouring. And I've had a ton of body contouring done. And especially when these things first came out and yeah, some of them, they took time to redo the applicators and the device itself and the temperature and all of these things, the protocols and fat loss technology for the body became really popular. I'd say about eight years ago. And during that launch of especially one piece of tech that uses cold, we saw that, yeah, there were issues that happened. And then the machine itself was adjusted. The applicators were adjusted. The placements were adjusted and all these things. So this is still pretty new. And to be totally honest with you, if you are a practitioner, because you know, I love to teach both the patient and, and the practitioner in the medical aesthetic space to elevate the industry at the end of the day, it's noted, I was actually doing some of my continuing medical education hours last year. And in one of the presentations, body contouring only constitutes about 8% of the medical aesthetics practice. So for those of you who are medical aesthetics practitioners, you're looking to get into medical aesthetics, connect with me, send me an email. And then I'm also hosting a really great summit um, this week, which I invite you to join. For the rejuvenation side of things, go to building your be be building your beauty brand.com. The links are also on my main website, the school of radiance.com. Okay. So the body contouring that we see in the clinics for fat is going to remove fat. It's going to tell those fat cells to die and undergo a process called apoptosis. Now people who are obese, they actually have a proliferation of fat. So this is a whole different situation of what happens when someone is obese and the fat cells actually multiply. But generally what happens is when you lose weight, the fat cells get bigger or sorry, when you lose weight, the fat cells get smaller. And when you gain weight, the fat cells get bigger. And you'll notice this shift in your face as well. When you have a lower BMI, you're not going to have, uh, you know, those fat cells are going to be smaller in your face essentially, but you're not changing the amount of fat cells that you have. And as we age, those fat cells, they can't, the fat compartments themselves, uh, they be, they're really like big and juicy and full when we're younger. And then as we age, they kind of like shift a little bit and the fat compartments shrink and then they sag and there's facial ligament changes too and all of that. Question from Sylvini, Sylvina, that's a very pretty name. I hope I said your name right. But there are some procedures where they remove fat from your body and then reinsert it in the face where needed. What do you think of that? Well, it's like you were reading my mind because that's exactly what I was going to go to. So we can actually liposuction. This is a surgical procedure that should be done by a board certified plastic surgeon, not like, say, for example, an ENT doctor that starts doing breast augmentation. Uh, one of my colleagues, Dr. Tony Yoon, he's known as America's holistic plastic surgeon. He actually just did a social media post on this very thing. So you have to be careful. Who are you seeing for these more surgical pr procedures like liposuction? You do want to see a board certified plastic surgeon. So the way that this stuff works is you go to med school, you become a medical doctor, and then you specialize. And then you take a board certification to be a specialist in that area. And that's what I've done. So I have my, well, not in the medical uh, school route, which I considered. 
I did my registered nursing degree, and then I took my board certification to be a certified aesthetic nurse specialist, so double board certified. And that's an indication of, you know, someone is actually a specialist in the area of concern that you're looking at. Same with an ENT. They're a specialized uh, physician after med school. So when it comes to doing things like liposuction, common areas are going to be underneath the chin. Common areas are going to be the arms, the back in different areas, the sides, and also the, the tummy itself and inner thighs. There's lots of areas that can be liposuction. So what happens is there's like this cannula that goes under the skin through tiny incisions that are made on the skin itself. It goes underneath and it goes, and it uses suction to actually pull out and suck out fat cells. So that is mechanically reducing the amount of fat in an area that you're wanting to reduce fat in, like the areas that I mentioned. Now what can happen is that fat that gets then put into a container after it's been sucked out of you, is it can actually be you know separated from the blood and then actually re-injected into areas of the face. So that transfer to the face is really the one way that is backed by research that can actually redeposit fat in specific areas, such as the cheeks, such as the temple, such as the lower eyelid. Actually, we can reposition fat in the lower eyelid. So for the question from Natasha, when we have lower eye bags, we've say likely lost fat in the malar fat pad. When we lose fat in the malar fat pad, your lower eye contents are going to actually kind of like spill over the cheek itself. And that's kind of what we call a festoon. And then you have this like visible bag and nothing's going to take care of that aside from surgery, supporting the cheek, and then looking at stimulating collagen and elastin in the skin. When eyelid surgery is performed to remove excess skin, it can also, during that time, some fat can be moved around a little bit. We call this fat repositioning. And this can be really beautiful for getting back those contours around the eyes and also facial fat transfer are options too. And those are all surgical. There's really nothing non-surgical that's going to do that. So sometimes, sometimes surgery is actually going to be the most time and cost effective solution. It just, it depends, right? This isn't medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. This is for informational and educational purposes only. So to answer Natasha's questions, is there something that can be done for getting back some of that fat around the eyes that were lost from being on this prescription eye drop, which yes, I am aware that that can happen. Sometimes working with an oculoplastic surgeon, which is the type of surgeon and the type of practice I've been a part of for many years. And yes, I, I do see clients in the clinic. So if you are in the uh, Victoria area or abroad, you can come and see me. My booking details are on my website. Love to meet you. I have for years had clients flying to see me from across the globe, which is why I started doing online Zoom skin consults in 2017 before anybody even knew what Zoom was to provide that support. Okay, so I answered Sylvina's question around fat transfer. Yes, we can take fat from another area of the body and actually it can be re-injected essentially into commonly re-injected areas like the cheeks, like the temples, maybe a little bit by an oculoplastic surgeon around the eyes and even into the marionette zone, the jawline, just depends where the facial fat is, the facial fat kind of like hollowing, volume loss from again, collagen, elastin, fat, and bone is happening. Is this going to be a more long-term option than dermal fillers, which uses hyaluronic acid? Absolutely. Is it perfect? No. When the fat is injected, some of the fat will take and some of it won't. So this is where I really like to highlight the importance of cellular health so that if you are undergoing procedures like lasers, like fat transfer um, or surgery, that your body's cells are operating in a really powerful way 
so that what you are investing in, you are hopefully going to be having the most powerful rejuvenation outcomes possible. And this is what I've been publishing in my research, be as healthy as possible so that when you do choose to invest in rejuvenation, you're going to be getting the best outcomes. And a product that I think is going to be really helpful and we're going to be continuing to see more and more information on is the N. A D formula from Qualia. And I do have a couple of promo codes. Uh, Varga will also get you 20% off. Varga or Radiance are codes that you can use. And that's neurohacker.com forward slash Varga or Radiance. And then the promo code Varga or Radiance for the NAD product. Now, why I'm talking about this is because we lose the precursors, the cellular, basically like nutrients that we need to make things like energy in our cells. So if you're giving your body things to operate better energetically, it shouldn't be too much of a stretch to postulate that you're going to be getting the best results from what you're doing because we lose NAD. So you've heard of NAD, NMN, they both do similar things they allow your mitochondria to make more ATP. And we forget that in our skin cells, we have mitochondria and our skin and the rest of the cells in the body, they all need energy equally. And we lose a significant amount of NAD in the body as we age, it's upwards of 65% as we age. So that's pretty significant. So I would say, get your health on point, reduce oxidative stress, eat the right foods, use the right products do things like dermal rolling. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and then do the in-clinic rejuvenation to kind of take care of what's left over, like doing the heavy lifting at home is what I like to say. And, you know, I don't see why you wouldn't be getting better results that way. So facial fat transfer is really the only way you're going to be getting new fat cells in a specific desired area. It's not going to be from using this face cream that claims to stimulate more fat cell production, right? Things can't come from nothing, but there are a lot of innovative things happening, which I will say in this space. So when a product comes to market and the data and the literature back up those claims, you know, I'm going to be sharing it with you. And the products that I do love, you can easily find on my skin shop. They're all pre-vetted by me and I'm constantly updating what I have available to make sure it's the best of the best. Question and additional follow-up question from Sylvina. How long does that last? Well, fat transfer, I mean, you might want to redo a facial fat transfer in 10 years or so. Facelifts are also great options too. However, the thing with the facelift is it's going to be pulling back the skin. You can do deep, deep plane facelifts. There's lots of different techniques that can be done in a facelift, a neck lift, a full facelift, a lower facelift, an eyelid lift. There's so many nuances that go in with the word facelift. And also it depends on the skill set of the surgeon who's doing it and also your features. So some people think, oh, I'll just, you know, in 10 years, get a facelift. You're still going to want to be looking at skin quality leading up to that. And you'll probably still want to do things like neuromodulators for lines between the brows that, you know, you don't need surgery for, for lines between the brows. You can sort that out with the neuromodulator. And you might still want to do even after a facelift, either a fat transfer or dermal fillers to restore loss volume or biostimulators. So I wanted to go here with biostimulators for a second because there are some products on the market that basically lay down a framework for more collagen and elastin to be stimulated. Now this can be helpful for skin texture, sometimes revolumizing, but it's it's one piece. It's like a chemical piece to stimulate more collagen and elastin. Now you can also do a mechanical piece and that's going to be things like your dermal rolling and in clinic lasers as well. So yes, injected biostimulators, mechanical and chemical kind of together, but uh, there are some injectable options for laying down more of a scaffolding for then collagen and elastin to bind to 
and give a degree of revolumizing as well. And hyaluronic acid fillers, you've probably, for the most part, all heard of that. That's using hyaluronic acid as well as a sugar molecule, BDDE. Some European products add different vitamins and cofactors into it as well. And this is like a gel. It's basically a gel implant that can be injected into areas where there are volume loss, like the cheeks, the nasolabial folds, the lips, the marionette zone, the jawline, necklace lines. Uh, we can even do injectables like the biostimulators and fillers into the hands to reduce the wobbly bits on the top of the hands. Elena, would you be able to assess if a bluff is the only option or other products might help? Absolutely. <laughs> Elena, Elena, that's what I that's what I do. I'll give you, you know, the straight up, okay, this is something that taking care of skin quality and dermal rolling and lasers might be able to sort out, or if it's going to be surgical. Uh, so just giving you some guidance and recommendations and education on that, obviously not medical advice. You'll still want to have a consult with an oculoplastics to really get that assessment on a bluff because I don't assess here on podcasts. <laughs> and Elena, are those pills? Yes, the NAD from neurohacker.com. That is a product that you consume. This is also a great question. Uh, is IV better? You can get NAD into your body from three different avenues. One of them is pills. That's super easy. Take them the first part of the day when you're doing your skincare routine, making your coffee, all that good stuff. The second one is IV. And some people get some stomach upset from that. And the third one is wearing like a patch with the NAD compounds on it. In my experience, the supplementation through the pill form with NAD is just an easier approach to get those compounds into your body. Elena says, thank you with the happy face. You're very welcome. So keep these questions coming uh, because these are really great questions that I'm sure if one of you are asking, others of you here live or catching the replay are also asking. So what can we do to make our skin and our face look younger and more full and stimulate collagen and elastin? Again, there's going to be the at home and then there's going to be the in clinic. And with the in-clinic, there's the surgical and the non-surgical components. So when I look at rejuvenation, and I've published this for eye rejuvenation, I've published this for jawline rejuvenation, so think jowl, say to the jawline, depth of chin, I publish algorithms. And the reason I publish these papers is so that I can actually speak to this stuff. Because I'm not just an influencer who's you know pulling things out of thin air from like a reel I saw. I'm a practitioner, so when I speak to things, I have to speak on what's published in the data. Very important when you are looking at different sources for skin and rejuvenation advice, what's the professional background of the individual? How many years have they been in the industry? And also, you know, even are they a practitioner? Do they publish research? Do they teach other individuals? Like, you, you know, I do all those things. I don't need to convince you or tell you to trust me. When you, when you hear someone say, trust me, don't trust them. <laughs> you, know, you won't, I mean, maybe in the past I might have said that, I mean, from a well-meaning place, but you really have to use your discernment, especially in the skincare and rejuvenation space. So what can we do at home? Don't sleep on your stomach and try not to sleep on your sides. You really are going to have to train yourself to sleep on your back, but it is when I sleep on my back, I always have a better sleep. I get have better sleep scores and I wake up more rested. If you say have like a shoulder or a hip situation going on, I mean, aging is inevitable. We all experience it. Hate to break it to you, but death is the only known in life. <laughs> so let's look good at the process. Like seriously, that's the only known in life is that it will end at some point. So when you're living, look and feel your best and, you know, really focus on that faith and family stuff. Don't get caught up in feeling like you're not good enough or anything like that. We all have insecurities, you know, even myself, when I'm showing up to talk about something, that imposter syndrome creeps up in all of us really. And even sometimes when I'm speaking or on stage, I can be a little bit nervous, but I just don't show it because I've learned to master my nervous system 
and also have learned more about communication and presentation skills and what to do with my hands, what to do with my feet, what to do with my head, and also my tone and how I speak and the words that I use. Uh, just some behind the scenes stuff out there that you might not have thought about. Being diligent with your skincare is going to protect your collagen and elastin. There, again, I'm just going to reiterate this. To my knowledge, at this time and in the literature, even the best biostimulators on the market, they still don't stimulate fat. But what they do is they lay the foundation for more collagen and elastin. But the only exception to this is being an actual fat transfer to specifically deposit more fat in certain areas where those fat compartments have atrophied and have kind of like broken apart and sagged a little bit. Gravity is really one of the key things that is aging us. Uh, we know this. Gravity always wins. My good friend and surgeon who I work with now, uh, he said that in a really old podcast. And, you know, he's right. Gravity wins. So sure, maybe using an inversion chair that, you know, that's not only going to be helpful for your face and turning that frown upside down temporarily, but also benefit for lymphatic drainage and even for your internal organs to help to like shift the positioning in your body as, especially as women age, we can experience things like uterine prolapse and rectal prolapses and all sorts of really fun things as we age. So that inversion chair, you know, might give you some relief if you're, if you're dealing with that. I think I should get one for my mom. Mom, are you on this live recording? <laughs> I don't see you here. I love you, mom. The other thing that you want to do, and you've heard me say this so many times, is be consistent. Be consistent with your skincare.